Hello, and welcome to the IT Asset Management San Diego platform release. I'm Brian Blackburn from the product marketing team here at ServiceNow. And in this session, I get to share with you the latest innovations across software asset management, hardware asset management, and cloud insights. We'll be joined later today by Adela Shehu and Alex Panzarea from our ITM solution consultant team, who's gonna walk us through some of these new capabilities. Let's dive in and see what's happening in IT asset management. It's no mystery that technology asset management requires collaboration between many teams and departments, such as HR, security, or procurement. ServiceNow IT Asset Management, or ITAM, helps drive collaboration and automation at every stage of the asset lifecycle. In the session, we'll explore a streamlined way to offboard technology, automate software requests, optimize costs and usage of reserved instances, and we'll take a look at the new Hardware Asset Manager workspace and Content Library Portal. As is the case with every release, our innovations are focused on helping ITAM teams address their biggest challenges, such as reducing costs across the full technology asset estate of software, hardware, or cloud resources, improving risk visibility and resolving issues quickly and strategically, and streamlining processes throughout the asset lifecycle at scale so their work is not dependent on multiple disconnected tools or manual processes. For example, when employees transition out of the business, inefficiencies in offboarding can result in missing, lost, or stolen assets that never get returned. Improper asset disposal can increase potential security risks, and unauthorized users can gain or keep access to sensitive business or customer data and information through the software. IT asset offboarding brings together ServiceNow hardware asset management and software asset management to create a simplified automated way of managing assets through the full technology offboarding process. HAM will help you determine the first appropriate path to either redeploy, repair, retire, dispose, or return an asset. And SAM helps put the workflows in place to uninstall software, revoke license and device allocations, and revoke software as a service subscriptions assigned to the user. To put things into perspective for us, I'll now hand it over to Adela Shehu, who is going to show us how it all works. Thank you, Brian, and hello, everyone. My name is Adela Shehu, and I will walk you through the IT asset of boarding. As an asset manager, I've just been notified that an employee is leaving the company, meaning I now need to get back any hardware or devices assigned to them and make sure to remove their access to any software and SaaS product. To initiate this process, first we go to the service catalog and we raise a request from here, IT asset of boarding. So here we can select the persona by which the request is done. It can be an HR, manager, or an end user. Choose HR and here we can select the user for which the request is. Once I select the employee separation, here we can see all the assets that belongs to this user. Then we select the reclamation date and the reclamation method, whether it's gonna be ship, pick up or drop off at the required location. And we can include also some special instruction. Once I submit this request, a new asset reclamation request number is created. And when I open this request number, I can see two tabs. One is uh, related to hardware asset reclamation and the other to software asset reclamation. For this particular user, there were seven assets. So seven line items has been created. I will walk you through one of them and the remaining will be the same. So the first task here is the scheduled shipment. During this task, the employee who is leaving the company is preparing the asset and he's shipping the asset. And after he shipped the asset, here he can include the shipping information, tracking number and the shipping date. And here we can select the location where this has to be returned. So once we fill all the information, the shipment details, then we can close this task. A new task is created, which is the receiving task. During this task, the employee, the employee, uh, the IT department, let's say, 
once they receive the asset, they can um, they can confirm that they received the asset here. And is asset reclaimed? Yes, and they close the task. And again, the third one is the evaluation task and the IT department can evaluate the asset that they just received. If this asset is working or not. If the asset is working, they can reuse this asset for other employees. Uh, if it's not working, then it goes to repair or disposal process. And we chose redeployable and we close the task. So with this, we have completed the hardware reclamation part. So now move on to the software asset reclamation. The same workflow begins after an asset has been received back from the employee. So on the software reporting part of the flow, we have two reclamation line. One is related to the device reclamation and the other to the user reclamation. The first one, device reclamation, is um, completed automatically. And the device reclamation, uh, first, we have an installed software from all devices owned by the employee. And next, we have revoke device license allocations from the entitlements. And this is done automatically. The second part, when we, it's the user reclamation, we have a few tasks. First. The first task is to remove the single sign-on access. So we want to ensure that the user doesn't have access to the application. So single sign-on access is first revoked. And then we revoke SAP access, or also if we have Citrix product, we revoke Citrix access as well. Then we revoke all um, SaaS product subscription assigned to the user. And then in the end, we revoke all user license allocations from the entitlement. As you can see, some of them are done manually or and some automatically. If, for example, we have uh, for the user subscription, if we have any SaaS integration, then the reclamation is going to happen automatically. If automatic reclamation is not available, then we create manual reclamation task. So with this, we have completed the onboarding process for this user. Thank you for listening. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Adela, for that wonderful walkthrough. Now let's take a look at what's new in software asset management. The content library portal serves as a centralized search portal for the ITEM content library, where you can search for information such as lifecycle dates, versions, downgrades, or part numbers. The portal is going to give you easier access and visibility into the expansive content library and its millions of available mappings so that you can confirm coverage of your most critical vendors and products. With AI search technology, this creates a fast, intelligent search experience in an easy to use portal. At ServiceNow, you hear us talk about automation quite a bit. Anytime we can help streamline your day-to-day -day work, that leaves more room for innovation and extra time and resources that you can dedicate to your more priority projects. When it comes to software requests, these can easily be impacted by high lead times and multiple manual steps that slow down service delivery and productivity. Virtual Agent for Software Requests leverages Virtual Agent to enable automation and user self-service, creating a simplified experience for end users. With Virtual Assistants, anyone making requests will gain support throughout the request process to identify best fit software, automatically allocate and install software, or if a license is unavailable, it can trigger the workflow to source and approve additional licenses. Once a license becomes available, virtual agent will auto allocate the license to the user and auto installs to complete the request. Let's switch gears now and take a look at what's new for hardware asset management. The hardware asset manager workspace on Next Experience serves as a command center for asset managers to track and manage assets while driving efficiencies at every stage of the life cycle. Hardware asset managers are challenged to manage a diverse asset estate, historically using multiple tools and pulling data from various locations, which can create situations where we're left guessing at what task comes next. This modernized workspace provides a centralized, single pane view of the hardware asset estate. At the very top of the workspace, you'll be directed to critical action items and automated optimization recommendations that will help you take the guesswork out of lifecycle management processes and will help you get to hand outcomes quickly. You'll gain visibility into all of your asset tasks, 
such as RMA requests, transfer orders, and asset audits, all from a single purpose-built workspace for hardware managers. Let's now hear from Alex Ponzerea, who's gonna show us a deeper look into the hardware asset manager workspace. Thanks, Brian. I'll be covering ServiceNow's new hardware asset workspace. If you're not familiar with Workspace and ServiceNow, Workspaces serve as a landing page of management interface for a specific use case. One of the first workspaces we came out with was for IT service management. That was to better track and resolve IT issues. We even came out with a workspace for software asset management, the previous Rome release, where we even made it easier to see compliance, manage publishers, and to reclaim licenses. With this latest release, we took the opportunity to come out with a workspace tailored for the hardware asset environment. The hardware asset workspace is a single landing page to easily manage your assets efficiently. Uh, within the hardware asset workspace, there are really five different views to provide you with visibility into all the different aspects of your assets. These five views contain the hardware asset overview, the inventory, asset estate, model management, and asset operations. In the first view, Hardware Asset Overview, we can get the following outcomes. We can take actions on items that require HAM administration. We can act on discrepancies, such as when an asset is missing a PO number, a model number, maybe some asset function is missing, or maybe even two manufacturer information is missing. Then we can actually even from there navigate to certain dashboards on asset functions, such as model normalization, asset requests, transfer orders, uh, disposal orders, all from the single pane right here in the hardware asset overview. And then as I continue to go down, I can come down to the 360 asset view. And so this will give me information around asset accounts by model category, uh, life cycle stages as far as what hardware assets I have out in my environment, what stage they're at, and then even to um, asset value by model category as well. If I go down to the next view in inventory, I can see what inventory functions need to be performed, such as missing fields, open tasks, open audits, and more all tailored around what I own. So this allows me to have confidence in my asset database since everything is accounted for, whether it be my inventory stock levels, what loaner assets I currently have out there, or even to pending delivery orders for certain stock rooms. So as we go down to the next view under asset estate, we can see asset functions and notifications such as expiring assets, expiring the leased assets. Maybe we have to fill in additional information such as purchase order number or missing or asset tag information. And if we come down to some different KPIs, we can see information as far as where assets are there on life cycle, whether assets are eligible for refresh, whether they're complete, how much money we're spending on certain model categories. It really just depends on what use case you're looking for, depending on what view and then what KPI you'd be able to search it on. But all these attributes within the workspace, you're actually able to select into to understand them in a greater detail. So if I look at refresh requests that there's one, I'd be able to select this refresh request. And then from there, you're actually able to see the individual request order. Everything in the workspace is really meant to be selected into to show you something at a high view and then select into it to understand at a granular level as far as where the attribute's coming from. So from here, I can either select back or I could have selected um, the different views on the side, but let's go down to model management. So model management view will allow us to create or edit models or even view models for that matter that are related to different asset functions such as hardware and consumer models nearing end of life. And from there, we can actually take the appropriate action. So for here, as far as the important actions up at the top, this is uh, information around uh, missing attributes around model number information that would be required in the normalization process, as well as maybe missing manufacturer data. And then even if normalization happens, maybe some attributes are missing, but allow you at least to be brought to the forefront as far as what needs to be remediated. And then as we go down to the actual uh, dashboards itself, as far as individual KPIs, we can see hardware models that are nearing end of life. We can see next days are coming up as far as the content refresh, and then just different normalization metrics to ensure that your asset environment is actually normalized. Lastly, we can come down to the asset operations view and can see different information around your stock rooms, 
and different model normalization rules that you can set up yourself. So this would be around setting up your different stock rooms or locations, the different stock rules that come with that to ensure that you always have a certain stock threshold. That's all the time we'll have today when we're discussing the hardware asset workspace. But as a recap, we really wanted to make sure that the hardware asset manager has the ability to see what actions they need to take in place and also to be able to see their entire IT estate in one single view. Back to you, Brian. Thanks so much, Alex. Turning our attention now to cloud resources, let's learn how Cloud Insights helps optimize cloud usage and spend with support for AWS and Azure reserved instances. Reserved instances refers to a discount billing concept where businesses can obtain significant discounts compared to standard on-demand cloud computing prices just by reserving cloud resources for a fixed period of time. The difficulty here lies in determining how much compute capacity is needed over that specific period. Guessing wrong can result in either paying too much due to underutilization or under purchasing and needing more compute capacity than originally expected. Cloud Insight supports reserve planning in the San Diego release, helping you find new opportunities to purchase reserved instances with out-of-the-box recommendations based on your usage trends. You'll be able to monitor your current reserved instance utilization percentages and gain suggestions for modifications so that utilization matches your business needs. With reservation plans, you can gain visibility into break-even periods, upfront costs, and estimated savings. All right, friends, we've made it to the end of the session. Let's quickly recap on the latest innovations for IT asset management in the San Diego platform release. San Diego brings HAM and SAM together to simplify and automate the complete technology offboarding process. The content library portal provides an easy, intuitive way to search for the ITAM content library for information on software lifecycle dates, downgrades, versions, part numbers, and more. Hardware asset managers now have a centralized workspace for key HAM tasks with a new hardware asset manager workspace on Next Experience. And lastly, you can use reservation plans to optimize cloud usage and spend with support for AWS and Azure reserved instances. That's going to conclude today's session on what's new in IT asset management for the San Diego platform release. Please feel free to check out our other broadcasts from across ServiceNow. Here's a few recommended ones. Thanks for listening in and see you again soon.